Good evening and welcome to our Shalom World Prayer evening as we gather as a community of faith in the presence of Christ himself. I welcome you very much indeed. Be reassured that there are many convents, monasteries, parishes where the prayer for the sick is very much at the heart. Should you wish to bring those prayers, please feel free to do so through shalomworldprayer.org and they will endeavour to ensure that those prayers are indeed brought before Christ. We begin this evening by asking God to be with us, to strengthen us, and we do so by invoking the Trinity this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take a little moment as we enter into this time of prayer together. And whatever part of the world you're in, we all journey with a sense of companionship, sharers of bread, as we pray for our sick. Let's just call to mind those that we are carrying in our hearts at this, at this present time, asking God to reach out, to grant healing in every possible way. As we do so, I'd like just to sing a little piece, Ubi Caritas, where charity and love are, God is. So let's recollect, recollect and bring together the names and the people and just that prayer for the sick in general as we present them to Christ. Ubi caritas et amor. Ubi caritas Deus ibi est. Ubi caritas et to pray this evening for Geraldine who is in hospital at present and is comfortable but please God will be undergoing some treatment for cancer. We pray for her family who are very worried about her and all of us at this time. I remember Peter this evening, Peter who struggles struggles in so many ways, uh, particularly with alcohol, asking the Lord to grant him relief, freedom, courage in the midst of all that he faces, and all those who are in the same context. Remember our elderly this evening as well, those perhaps who are in a nursing home. I know one such lady who is in a nursing home and maybe there's a sense of anxiety and we pray that she will begin to settle into the nursing home and have a sense of peace and welcome and knitting together with the rest of the community in that nursing home. 
We pray for those who are worried and anxious, how that anxiety can indeed be crippling at times and takes over in one's life, blotting out any receptivity to the positive or to that sense of inner peace. So we pray that that sense of worry will be broken down. You know, in our hospitals, we have many nursing staff, uh, doctors, consultants, so many different professionals. We have all the auxiliaries, those who keep the hospital clean. We thank God for every single one of them. They're all part of the team, but they too have their worries and anxieties. We pray for them too. Perhaps they have family members who are unwell or good friends. And we might include too the bereaved this evening. Asking you, Lord, to be with them in their hurt, in their sense of pain and suffering. And perhaps when the time is right, there can be an opportunity to reach out just to bring that sense of solace and reassurance, indeed empathy as well. So we pray for healing on all these frontiers. Might I add our homeland, our planet Earth, as we think about creation, does our planet Earth not suffer? Created by God, given to us in trust. pray for change of heart. We pray that the world will indeed awaken to the reality of what is happening. It is not as if the world has been given enough warnings. So we pray that our beautiful homeland on which we depend, given to us by God to care for, will indeed be cherished and healed. Let's just take a little moment now in front of Christ. Perhaps just look into his heart to offer our lives, our stories, all that we are, to place ourselves firmly and squarely in his hands the evening. And all the sick across the world. In these hard economic times as well, when life is pretty tough, to say the least, pray for families who are experiencing poverty on different levels. We pray for parents, for grandparents too, who play such a significant role, asking the Lord to give them courage, new heart. And we're thankful, thankful for those who bring healing. We pray for all volunteers this evening who give of their time in food banks and so many other places that help to nourish, be present, support those out in the streets during the night. Maybe bringing some soup, some food to those who are cold and isolated. We thank God for every one of them. Pray for healing to where there is misunderstanding. We pray that there will be a meeting of minds, ways forward, unraveling of the knots, a meeting of minds, and a new life. The Gospels give us some hope and also give us a fresh perspective 
recently, I've been reflecting on the role of Saint Peter. Last week in the Gospel, Peter was the one who comes up trumps when he proclaims Christ as the Son of God. The uncertainty among his friends, the apostles, give way to Peter's sense of leadership, and he speaks with a sense of confidence. Christ rejoices in this new confidence in Peter and watches him as he grows in stature. Peter is at peace in himself in this new realization, which not only helped him, but helped the apostles. Isn't it intriguing that in today's gospel, Peter is remonstrated with by Christ. He's told off, get behind me, Satan. Your ways are not God's ways, but man's ways. As Peter would come to his defense and protect him. Peter is bemused and somewhat confused by the response of Christ. And yet Christ is shaping Peter, crafting him, molding him, helping him to understand the reality of who he is. Peter learns from today's experience and perhaps focuses more on God's ways, trying to understand them more and clothe himself with these ways. Peter is humbled by today's experience, but it is lovely that Christ doesn't give up on him. He doesn't tell him to go because he happened to be thinking in man's ways. No. In fact, in many respects, he is loved all the more. Doesn't Peter remind all of us of our own shortcomings and our own weaknesses? How easy it is for us to fall, and yet we rely heavily on that forgiveness and love of God who loves us first. Peter becomes a man of depth, of faith, of humility, always rooted in Christ. All those little moments of denial, the three times in Pilate's court. Or the three moments of confirmation of his love of Christ after his resurrection. something wonderful about this as Peter's knots in his life begin to unravel through that forgiveness and healing. Let's pause a little moment in front of Christ today to ask him to grant us his healing, his strength, Whatever it is in our minds that we carry, sometimes unseen by the human eye, let's just hand it all over to Christ. See? And let him take more control. He asks us to abandon ourselves all the more. Let's take a little moment just to place ourselves are sick in that Peter-like fashion before Christ who loves us.
For the love of my Lord is the essence. For all that I love here on earth, for the beauty I see he has given to me, and his giving is gentle as silence. Every day, every hour, every moment have been blessed by the strength of his love. At the turn of each tide, he is there at my side. And his touch is as gentle as silence. There have been times when I've turned from his presence, and I've walked other paths, other ways. But I've called on his name in the dark of my shame, and his mercy was gentle as silence. Lord, we come to you. We place before you all those in our hearts. We remember those who have no one to pray for them. We remember those perhaps who through whatever has happened in life have become more distanced from faith, from God. We pray that there may be a way found in order to celebrate that sense of homecoming, to be open to God's love and to truly be at peace. One thing that strikes me is that many of the saints didn't always have it easy. They too suffered from illness and other issues in life. I wonder what are the qualities that enabled them to keep going? Perseverance, prayerfulness, ultimately a sense of love. Even in the midst of the pain and the suffering, the love of God can triumph. So we invoke the saints this evening to You probably have a favourite saint, someone that you can turn to. The saints are not just there to be looked at in the pages of a book or a story of their lives. But the saints are there to befriend, to make part of our own lives, to give us strength and courage on our own journey of faith. There are many saintly people People who, through the auspices of God, can bring us close to him. Thank you, Lord, 
for the modern day prophets in our lives. The Barnabas figures encourage us on the way. We ask the intercession of all the saints this evening, along with Mary, that great model of faith, prayer, and the church. Mary, who understood suffering, holding her son at the foot of the cross. We ask you, Lord, to be with the sick, to grant them your strength, your healing and renewal. Please touch the woundedness that we all experience. Grant us your peace, that inner healing, that inner wisdom and discernment, so that we may be, may be able to journey forward. Whatever it is that we are worried about, the cares that we carry in our hearts, help us to place these in your hands so that we can journey forward tonight, tomorrow and every day. The real sense of serenity and peace. Let us pray together the prayer of the kingdom this evening. Where did we encounter the kingdom today? I encountered it in the planting of two trees today, one to represent each of the churches in our parish. Trees are a Rowan mountain ash tree local to our area. One to represent 150 years of faith in the church of Our Lady of the Visitation in Cumber, and the other to represent the restoration of St. Patrick's, which is over 145 years. I was struck as we planted two trees by the importance of tilling the soil, allowing the roots to gradually connect with the soil. And the hope being that there would be new growth and that the trees would remind us of our being rooted in Christ through our baptism and our call to draw from him to be fed. <laughs> Lord, guide us. So we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil we praise you lord jesus we thank you we thank you for your presence we are grateful to you for your kindnesses and we cherish your love. If God is for us, who can be against us? Mary, we ask you to intercede with Jesus, your son, to put in a good word for us as we journey in faith. Be with the sick. Grant healing in every way. So, as we come to the end of our time in the presence of Jesus, perhaps 
for each of us tonight, we might look back on the day. As I mentioned earlier, where do we encounter the kingdom of God? Where do we bump into Christ today? Could it have been through some encounter? A healing word? Through these experiences, we in our own turn can bring healing to our world that is greatly wounded. We journey in the field hospitals of life. Sometimes that can be confusing. confusing. Sometimes we have misunderstandings and, and we worry, but Christ is with us. More strength in us. I thank you for your presence this evening. Let us keep one another in our prayers, particularly for our sick, who can teach us so much and who, in the midst of sickness, brings such healing. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.